Thank you. And I do apologise to those in the audience that, that there was a mistake in our agenda. So organisations are given 10 minutes and individuals are given five minutes. So uh, th there was no running over time um, with that submission. Um, Aroha Nui Grace. What? Uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, good morning, uh, my name is Arohanui Grace and I am a ratepayer and resident of Christchurch. I returned to Christchurch last year, having lived in the north for over 20 years. Um, I'd like to begin my, what I want to say this morning with a whakatauki. Hūtia te rito o te harakeke, kei he te komako e ko, ki mai ki a hau, he aha te mea nui i te ao. Mā kui e ki atu, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Nō reira tēnā koutou. This whakatauki roughly translates thus. If you cut out the growing shoot of the harakikiri or the flax bush, the plant dies and there's nowhere, nowhere for the bellbird to sing. You ask me what the most important thing in the world is and I reply, it's people, it's people, it's people. What this whakatauki speaks about is a system of interconnected parts which when you change one part of course the rest is affected. However the last part of this whakatauki I believe points to the way ahead and it's about people. It's not money and it's not business that makes the world go round, it's people. And I believe that it is people and not buildings and that need to be at the very core of where you invest our money in this long term plan. I think in the 21st century we are now entering the age of working together. Not working harder, not working smarter, but working together. And getting that one plus one equals three effect that only comes when people actually do work really well together. And a friend of mine who is an electrician uses a really good example to illustrate what I'm talking about. He says it takes him as a sparky about three days to wire up a house on his own. But it only takes one day when he works together with another Sparky. And I'm sure that all of you can think to a time when you've had the satisfaction of working together with others and creating something which you know is way beyond what you might have created on your own. Um, it might have been in a working group, it might have been in a sports team, or it might have been working with people in the community shoveling liquefaction after the earthquakes. Not only is there that feeling of a job well done, but there's something else that happens. There's a factor that comes into that which isn't really measurable. And when I try to label it, the closest that I can come to is there's a sense of joy or fun that comes from working with people. And it's this unmeasurable and really fleeting experience which has enormous impacts on the well-being of the people who are involved. And because it's a system, there's a flow-on effect. I've often heard this called the fluffy stuff. This is the soft skills if you're talking about it in a business context, but actually it's the hardest part if you want to try and consciously create this. Well-being generating activity is usually seen as the nice to have, and it's the icing on the cake, and it's the first thing that gets cut when times get tough. Yet when we work together, not only does the job get done faster and more effortly, Actually, that well-being factor, that immeasurable thing, that sense of social connection and cohesiveness has well been proven to improve health, health statistics, it lowers crime, it increases productivity, just to name a few of those things. So when you are looking at best investing our finances in this long-term uh, plan process, I'm suggesting actually that you start, number one, with yourself. We ratepayers are invested, have a vested interest in you working together. You are our leaders, you are our role models, and you're a microcosm of our wider system. And we need you to act together on our behalf to push back where there have been decisions that you and we haven't actually been involved in. Secondly, in your staff, I think it's important to remember that if your brief in the past has been to ensure that the rules are kept and that the red tape is adhered to, then investment in learning and development is necessary for something that is people-focused to actually start to happen. The staff are, are residents and ratepayers of this city and they're worthy of this investment. And then in our communities, and not last, not last because they're least, but actually because they're worth getting it right for. 
Over 50% of the people who live in the city earn under $30,000. There's not a lot left after rent for food, transport, etc. So when you're investing our money, I'd suggest that you invest in local things, local infrastructure, activity and events that people can walk to, that people can do for free, things that people can participate which actually consciously grows their contribution. I'm not saying that the big stadiums aren't important, but actually they're the nice to haves. They're the icing on the cake and not the other way around. Can I go over for a couple of seconds? A couple of seconds. Thank you. Um, I think the, if I was to follow a hunch, the, a huge number of the people who've come and spoken in this hearing process are the people who come from badly affected areas in the city. They have an experience which cannot, which is, a, which is an opportunity for this council to actually take advantage of. They know what it feels like to work together to create something bigger than, the, than, than what it is that they, they could ever create on their own, because they've had a disaster. And I think it's the, those exciting um, pallet pavilions and, and innovative projects which have brought people like me to come back to this place. Um, I think where people are well and thriving, business always follows, and I think you can trust that. So there's an opportunity that's unique here in Christchurch for you to invest in um, and build on this experience that people have had in this place so that it remains and continues to grow and be a place that we want to come and live in, to be in and do business. Nō reira, tēnā koutou. Kia ora, thank you very much. Um, Colin Lock.